I talk about it most days. I have to talk about it because people ask questions. Almost like a script that you say over and over again. I was in a car accident, both my arms were hurt. One of them was amputated. You kind of just get used to saying those things. The 15 years of, of not really kind of having proper discussions about it in a, in a way that perhaps we can kind of move forward and, and heal that kind of emotional side of it. I'm only 21 and I'm still trying to figure out who I am and, and what I want to do. And as I tell my story and have conversations with people, I'm learning more about myself and, yeah, the events that have happened. I'm doing kind of a mix of things. I teach dance each week to multiple groups of kids and I dance myself in a company. I'm running a photography business as well. All photos that I take, I want to focus on showing the strength and power of everyone. I think everyone kind of has a story to tell and the amazing things with photographs is you can tell so much from just one photo. I've just kind of gotten into motivational speaking recently. Uh, when I speak, I have to talk about the accident quite a lot because obviously it's quite a significant part of my story. I definitely don't stand up there and pretend to know it all or want to come across that I've overcome all these challenges and I'm a happy, amazing person because there's definitely all these things that still affect me from, from the events that have happened in my life. And what I'm saying in my speeches about overcoming challenges and, and all that stuff. I can't just ignore it and not do it for myself. I have to make sure that I'm constantly trying to grow and, and move up the mountain. I'm going to be meeting some other girls with amputations and talking to them about their journey and the way they kind of tick and how it's affected them. So I'm excited to kind of work with the girls and show their story a little bit through the lens and see what we can kind of get out of them. And having conversations about my own trauma and events in my life is definitely gonna make myself a better speaker. So we're going to Bryle's house today and I haven't met her before, which is kind of cool. It'll be exciting to meet her uh, and hear about her story and her journey, which is exciting. And we're gonna do a photo shoot um, there as well, which will be fun. Hello. Hi. How are Hi. you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Come on in. Thanks. It's still very rare to see especially an above elbow exactly. female amputee who's kind of the same age. So yeah. it's really cool to kind of yeah. talk to someone about your journey and how you feel and everything that goes along with walking down the street with one arm and, mm -hmm. and the reactions that you get from different people and dealing with exactly. that. Exactly. When did your amputation happen? Well, I was 19 when it happened, actually. I was playing a game of tennis and I lifted up my arm to do a first serve and the arm broke. And we were just like, this is so weird, like why did she break her arm? And I was in a lot of pain and we thought that I had actually dislocated my shoulder. And then when we took, they took me to the hospital and um, they did an x-ray on me and it, it had shown that I had a break. And so after that, they did a biopsy and about a week later, it was confirmed I had bone cancer. So I went through the treatment, went through chemotherapy and they did try to save the arm because they knew that I was going to America for a tennis scholarship and by January, they were like, no, we can't save the arm. The cancer is just too aggressive. So 
Wow. By February, I was, oh, February 4, actually, was when I had the amputation done. So, yeah, that's how I had, uh, that's how I had the arm amputated. <laughs> when, when was that? So that was... 2009. Thank you. No worries. What was your reaction to it? It was more of a coming to terms with like, okay, I've had the arm taken off, what do I do? <laughs> because like, I didn't have any one to really work off. Lower your chin slightly. Yeah, that's it. Like it's always out there in the media that what's really beautiful is if you're all full bodied, especially at a young age, being yeah. 19, image is everything to girls. <laughs> yeah. We know that too well. Yeah. So coming to terms with that and feeling yeah. confident again that's been a long process and it's only take, it's taken me about eight years to get to a point where I'm just like, yeah, I'm accepting that this is who I am and this is, this is my new identity now. Do I wish I still had the arm sometimes, but I would rather be alive. <laughs> That'll be the one if it's the one we'll put on. Yeah, there. yeah, definitely. <laughs> Relax one leave if it feels comfortable. Yeah. Hang on. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> It looks like your arm's going into the tree. <laughs> it's trippy. It's like the tree is disappearing into my arm. I still dream with two arms. <laughs> oh my god, I do too. And, like, yeah. and when you get an itch. Yeah, like... I get that too. And <laughs> or when yeah. someone tries, like someone throws you a ball and you try to catch it with yeah. two arms. Yeah. <laughs> you were saying that you had yours like 15 years ago. Yeah, so I was six. Um, and my family and I were going on a camping trip. We were in a van, so I was sitting in the booster seat in the front, mm -hmm. and Mum was driving my two, two older sisters in the back, and we hit a patch of gravel, and our van lost control. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I became... Well, the van flipped onto the side I was on and became trapped underneath and dragged along. Um, yeah, and pretty much... So both my arms are really badly damaged. Um, they fixed, fixed up my right arm, but... My left, yeah, my left arm was amputated the next day. So that was, f mine was February 1st. They saved as much as they could, but I'm still, I've got quite a short stump. Mm -hmm. um, I have so much respect for that six year old because she just had this kind of attitude of, this is cool, this is a challenge, let's yeah. take it on. But I think the hard parts came later when everyone's trying to figure out who they are and then, <laughs> yeah. I, and then having this a kind of added complication mm. and trying to figure out, mm, yeah, I definitely went through these stages of I don't want one arm anymore. And mm. there's some weeks I have those moments I'm just like, this is annoying, I don't want this. Or it's too hard. Yeah, it's <laughs> too hard and it's not fair and you have those moments. But, yeah, I think it's definitely been a journey and a process especially over the kind of the past two years for me is, is, is that whole thing of coming to terms with that this is my situation. I think the accident is like a really significant event in my family's life. And it's always been kind of a subject that we haven't really talked about as a family and to each other, because I think there's a lot of kind of pain and, and like emotional mental scarring from that day. It's always been, yeah, too hard to talk about or it's never been the right timing. And my memory from after the accident, it's very foggy. I remember kind of going home after being in hospital in bits and pieces, but a lot of that kind of following year, I don't remember. Because mentally and emotionally, obviously, it's affected me throughout the past 15 years. I definitely get anxiety. I'm not sure if it's from the accident. Don't really cope very well if I'm not in control of what's happening. I've never really kind of understood those things very well. I think kind of being busy and, and kind of braving through it all definitely makes myself feel better about it. Not, and probably other people, I might think, be protecting other people and making them feel like I'm okay as well.
I find that I get quite anxious going in cars or especially in vans. You know, touring around for different events and stuff, I definitely have to kind of coach myself through the fact that I'm going in a van. And I don't like sitting in the back of a van. I'm fine sitting in the front, even though that's where I was in the accident, I think, because I'm in more control. I freak myself out when I'm not in control and when things aren't going the way I want to, and it can just kind of spiral into getting worse and worse. Thank you. Cool. I love coming here, it's like a second home. We do more mind stuff as well as physical training. So today I have my session with Taylor, which is what I do every week. And I'll do 45 minutes of self-love talk. At the moment we're kind of looking at my need to kind of be in control of situations so that I'm not showing weakness or that I'm not feeling disabled. You said here that I remember the, fe the feeling of being out of control as the scariest thing in the world. And that's really important because a lot of all your anxiety and stuff that we talk about is all surrounded around your fear of not being in control of situations and getting better at how we can let go. You said maybe it's just me as opposed to the event making it me. Yeah. Can you tell me a bit more about that? I don't know, maybe I'm just like this. <laughs> Things that we deal with as kids, whether they're good or bad, shape who we are as we get older, right? Mm -hmm. It's like our influence, it creates our mental mind print for us when we get older, right? Yeah. And for a six-year-old to go through something like that, it just sounds pretty normal that it would come from that place, as opposed to being oh, right, look, you've just got anxiety, you know what I mean? <laughs> but if we actually deal with the other stuff, and it won't define you as a girl with one arm, and then you'd just be Briley. Swing at 61. Sweet. Shall we train? One, stand up tall. Two, good. Most bodies are pretty symmetrical, but mine is very much not, so it means that causes quite big issues for my balance. Even just standing up or walking, I'm constantly using my core to keep me centered, and it's really easy to lose that when I do get tired. So I definitely do get frustrated, and I know Till sees it, and she's really good at kind of snapping me out of that. Faster, fast feet, fast feet. Move your legs. Who weighs as much as me? Go. <laughs> Go. Fast. Five. Good. Just two. Go. I do love what I'm able to do, and I love that my body's strong and, and fit. Two. Last one. One and time. my way to Claudia's place. I've known Claudia since I was uh, about nine years old and so it's really exciting to go chat with her and talk about kind of her experience. I haven't, we haven't really talked about it before so that'll be really cool and yeah I'm excited for that and to do a photo shoot with her as well which will be fun. I prefer driving because I'm kind of in control. Driving with one arm's fine. I'm kind of used to, I've ne I never drove with two arms, so I think that kind of helped. But no, I feel okay with it. I think indicating's the hardest thing. Kind of if you're in like a turning position and then you want to indicate, uh, I can't really take my hand off. But no, it's, it's fine. I never really known any different. Hello. Hi, how are you? 
good. How are you? I'm good. Oh. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Would you mind sharing what your what happened for you and what yeah what your story is in terms of having your leg amputated? So I got H1N1 swine flu, the commonly known. Um, uh, that fateful <laughs> school holidays, and basically it all went downhill from there. Multiple complications, body shutdown, etc. I was in a coma for a few days, so I didn't really know what was going on. And then um, I was actually on a, um, a respirator for a wee while, and so they waited until they took me off that, um, so that I could like respond when they told me that they were going to have to amputate at least part of my leg. And uh, at that stage, it was, I mean, it was looking bad for my my hands as well at that stage, and this this leg too. So. Do you remember just, your first thought? It's just like it's just. The first thought is just like, I can't believe this is happening. Like, obviously, anyone who this doesn't happen to, it's just not something that you expect. <laughs> and so it was hard to sort of wrap my head around that. And like, I was thinking about, honestly, it like, went through my head, like the sports that I played, like netball and stuff. And I was like, like oh, I, won't, I won't be able to like do that stuff. Like, you can't just like bounce back from something so permanent. What year was it? 2009, so first year yeah, of high school. <laughs> <laughs> the, the momentum. I reckon we got over that way. Okay. In the shape. Does that work? Sweet. Where do you think that you are now in comparison to where you were on that day? Sometimes you sort of get into that mode where you're feeling like, okay, like, I have to deal with this for the rest of my life. Like, that. It sucks, but mm. you try you try to ignore that it's affecting you. That's more how you sort of want to appear that you're all good, everything's fine. But like mm. definitely days where it just affects your image of yourself in terms of it's, it definitely looks different. It just sort of really affects how you meet people and stuff. You, Start thinking, overthinking. <laughs> Not that either. You can just do some facing me. Not Seriously. dark, serious thoughts. Oh, it's really hard to keep a smile. Okay. Lower your chin's line. Boys, yeah. do you have a boyfriend? No. Have you had a boyfriend? No, actually. I do think about it sometimes, I'm like, is that a thing that if, like, oh, I don't know, like if someone was otherwise interested in you, but then they're like, hmm, like, uh, I don't know, if they're like, I don't know how to approach it. I, don't, I just don't know. Honestly, I have zero experience, so... Um. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, but it, it's it's interesting. Like, I do I do as well think about it, like, is that going to be a factor in... Because it's a factor in my normal relationships with friends, yeah. but it becomes something that doesn't even matter. Face, like, profile? So I think that's with any relationship, with friends, family, anyone, colleagues, anything, that when you are learning about someone, it's, it is a significant part of my life. <laughs> it's my favourite. <laughs> Pony tail You're story. not blue steel, you're like... Mm. <laughs> I still have the same struggles as every other girl about kind of body image, but not necessarily to do with having one arm. Sometimes, I mean, you get stared at a lot. I do wonder, like, what goes through guys' heads, like, when they, when they view me over other people. Yeah, I do wonder, like, is it gonna impact the relationships I have with boys? But I have the ability to walk and, and run and be really fit and, and dance. I started dancing when I was four. Dance is, it's so much more than just like a physical activity for me. It's, yeah, there, there's something about walking into a studio and being able to just kind of leave everything else in your world outside and just come in and dance. 
There's definitely kind of the challenges when it comes to having one arm and dancing, because dance is symmetry, and I'm probably the most non-symmetrical person. Balance has always been a challenge, and dance has definitely helped me to get better at it. But also I've had to kind of go further than that and get better in a way that I can do movement and transfer my weight quickly and, yeah, kind of adapt to different things. Hello, how are you? Good. Did you have a good day? Yeah. All right, we're going to do a warm-up. We're going to go into set in stone and do the combo, and then we're going to have a chat at the end of class. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. spread out. All right, we go. I met a girl last night. Ha, two. Three, down. I find it challenging to choreograph for myself just because I visualise myself with two arms in my head. But I love choreographing for my students and that's really cool because I get them to do the movement that I see in my head. And like you, breathe, down. There, and over, da, 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 da. Five, six, seven, eight. I see these girls every week, most of them more than once, and they spend a lot of time with me, so I have the opportunity to be a role model. Yeah, definitely focusing on, on being able to support them and help them in, in figuring out what they want to do and, and how they want to do it. I definitely making sure they know that I'm on this journey as well. They know that I see Taylor every week and they know that I'm constantly doing the self-love stuff for myself and that it's really important that they don't think that I have it all figured out and that I'm a perfect person and I know what I'm doing. Should we do a self-love circle? Lift. Your fave, yeah. all right, come on. Circle. No, you can sit however you want. I want you to tell me one thing you're proud of that you've achieved this year. Um, getting my full license. Yay! Yay. Okay, Kaylin. Um, getting into my makeup course. Yay! Yay. Who's going to Christchurch? You all want to be here, right? Yeah. Some of you want to go on to do full time. Some of you want to go on to do this as a career. Is if someone in your team does well and you don't, the way that you act is the most important thing. All right, you can all go now. Well done. I'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. Good. Nice. Come in. Yeah, I'm really interested to hear about your kind of journey and then to hear how you lost your leg. I was born with a congenital deformity and um, I had a, an amputation um, at the ankle joint um, in order to fit me for a prosthetic leg when I was about 18 months old. When it happens to you when you're so young um, that you don't really process it at that point. I battled with anxiety, um, and depression for a long, long time, and I'm still dealing with it. I'm in a much better space now, but like literally just in the last year or so, um, you know, I've only just sort of come right. So you do modelling stuff? That's cool. Yeah, yeah, I, it's just sort of a hobby. I started to do more creative shoots and get more bold about, you know, actually utilising my disability as kind of a, a focal point. Especially at the moment, there's, there's this real sort of body positivity kind of movement. Because I think, you know, we're bombarded with perfect images and, you know, we need to kind of remind ourselves that that's not actually real. I mean, 
it's been really interesting talking to kind of other amputees and especially female around my age and, and talk to them about their journeys and knowing that I'm not the only one that doesn't have it all figured out and I'm not the only one that has these kind of flow on effects from, from this kind of physical trauma that happened and yeah and I think it's really interesting learning that people are kind of at different stages of their process as well. And yeah, I definitely learnt more about where I am and, and how, how I feel about kind of being an amputee and being a female and, and often feeling quite isolated in that, but then knowing actually there are other people going through this. If that's the way that I can help other people is by telling my story and sharing what I've learnt and yeah, inspiring them to kind of overcome these challenges that they may face, whatever they might be then that's really what I want to be doing. And I know that you'll put your hands together and give her a big Newton welcome. Hi guys, how are you? I'm what you call an amputee. And I think people kind of automatically presume that I am different. What I'm beginning to figure out is that actually we are all the same. Because in life, I think everybody goes through challenges, things that are really hard, things that make you think, this isn't fair, why did this happen to me? Things like, I, I don't know if I can get through this. But if there's anything that you can take away from what I'm gonna tell you about today, I hope it is this. The obstacles in your life don't have to define who you are or who you become. Physical balance is one thing, but we also think about kind of our emotional and mental balance. And sometimes when things are taken away, it's hard to get back to feeling whole again or to feeling balanced. And sometimes it just takes a whole lot of little ingredients to kind of get us back to feeling, to feeling whole again and to feeling like us. I'm definitely not at the end of my journey in terms of overcoming the challenges that I've been through. But I feel like now I'm at this place where I'm really proud of having one arm and I'm proud that I've accomplished what I have and that I have the ability to do what I do. Yeah, I just love it. Attitude was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.